Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Genius Cafe. My name is Julie. I'm the events and marketing manager here. And um, today I'm very happy. I'm very pleased to host Genius Talk for us because we're having a, a special guest speaker, Ayla Nordin. She's um, <laughs> originally from Malaysia, but that she's been living here for in Indonesia, I mean, like for 15 years. And then she's a the creative and strategic force of Niat Consulting. And um, um, yeah, okay. And then she's going to speak about um, a very interesting topic, uh, branding with intent. And um, yeah, so that we don't have waste time. So I'm gonna give the time and floor to Ayla. So please give applause for her. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, come on. Hi guys, good evening, good afternoon. Um, thank you for coming. Is everybody like cozy and if you want to move forward because this is just us and whoever's like far away, please come here. And um, so thank you for your time and uh, being part of this. So today our talk, I think will be about, depending on how fast I can speak and I can speak really fast, um, will take about 45 minutes or so. And it's about really branding because that's my background. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. As Juliet said, my name is Ayla. Suhaila Nordin, I'm Malaysian. I moved to Indonesia um, 15 years ago, uh, and I was based in Jakarta for about 10 years or so before I moved to Bali, the last seven years. But I moved to Bali for, for a job. So uh, I started my career in advertising. Um, I got qualified in Curtin in Perth, if any of you were from Australia. And I did um, a Bachelor of Commerce in Marketing and Advertising. And my first job was in Food Corner and Belding, if we have anyone from the advertising world. So there are guys from Chicago, big boys. Um, I did that, then went to a digital agency, then moved to Jakarta, started a family business in the restaurant business, um, then decided to hop back into advertising. So I was with Leo Burnett on Jakarta for about seven years before I jumped into the um, client site, we call it, right? Uh, I was in the property development business um, in retail, specializing more in shopping malls as the general manager of marketing. Thank you for coming. And um, then I got moved here to start Beachwalk. So do you guys know Beachwalk, the mall? Yeah, so that was in Kuta. I got moved here to do the pre-opening team, the commercial leasing stuff, advertising stuff, marketing stuff, the works with the team. And when that was done, my commitment was for five years. I didn't want to go back to Jakarta. So I started my own consulting business. Um, I base myself here, but I've got clients around the region. So a little bit about NIAT. Um, the company, the consulting company, it all started, it wasn't really originally a um, consulting business or brand marketing consulting. It started off with me uh, getting into um, meditation. I got myself certified when I was here, uh, then in, in yoga, and um, I created my own platform for mindfulness, and I called that Niat Living. Am I talking too fast? Are you guys following me? Yeah, okay. I'm good, huh? Um, so, niat living, niat means if you're Indonesian or if you know Malay, which is the same as Indonesian, means intention. So, niat living was how to live with intent. So, I'm, I don't call myself a meditation teacher. I just facilitated, facilitated a space within art galleries where I said I held space or I hold spaces for people to kind of get centered and stay within and be within. And we had like a practice and it slowly picked up and it was cool, it was fun. But um, I couldn't do that full time. So on the same concept, when I was thinking about it, I had to go back to marketing and advertising and branding because that's what I know better. On the same concept, it hit me that businesses, because having worked with direct owners of big conglomerates, also needed clarity in ideation and business expansion. So within the same concept of intent, I felt that businesses also needed the same way they approach um, branding or marketing, like how we would look within to find out what the intent or the purpose or the values for their businesses. So that's when the birth of NIAT Consulting came about. 
Basically, um, to the layman, it's just another branding agency. We, we specialized in naming and logo creation and um, aesthetic development, but it's not as simple as that because there's a lot of, I believe, given my experience, that there's a lot of intent and science behind it. And it seems to work mainly with very new age CEOs that are running big conglomerates and they want to expand into other brands or other businesses and um, this has applied. Okay, so a quick skim through my consulting business. So it's called NIAT. Um, this is where all the clients are. Currently we're in Bali, Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, Do Kuala Lumpur Doha and Perth. So it's as simple as about intent, people and culture is the big picture. Though we apply at the end, the output is still logo and naming and branding. And I'll take you guys through that and how you can apply that to your businesses. Um, what we do is we help individuals and companies realize their cost and potential through what I call life design, which is actually mindfulness because people don't like the word meditation. So that's another term we use. Branding, culture and most importantly, value creation. It's finding out what is that value you're providing for your business um, and how do we communicate that. So we call that intentional living. Um, is any lifestyle based on individuals, groups, or conscious attempt to live according to their values and beliefs? And the path is like a lot of consciousness path. It comes from intent, and then you go through your mindset, your values, your beliefs, you move behaviors, um, the way we speak, the language, and at the end, it's about a desired feeling that you want your customers or people to feel. The consulting services we offer, as I mentioned, I started off with Niat Living, that mindfulness platform, so now I still go to corporates because they kind of understand it, and we call it life design and well-being, where we actually also want to do one-on-one -on -one where they come on retreats or workshops and understand on how to be mindful and s sit still and somewhat go into a light meditation practice. Uh, the core business now is our consulting business, which is ideation and branding, um, creating small ideas for big impact through what I call intentional branding solutions. And it's an organic growth now that I'm getting a lot of uh, demands for CEOs to look into their culture and sustainability within employees as well. So that's happening. So that's just a quick kind of look through at what we do for Niat Living, some branding work for Niat Consulting, and some internal collaboration and um, culture work. So this is the framework that I will take you through for the talk on another proposal, but, um, and I'll show you example of case studies so you can see how this applies. But basically, it comes from discovery, planning, and then we diagnose what's going on with your business and with you. We have honest conversations, and then we create a plan, implement, and then we work on a sustainable approach within. Yeah, Though it's the final outcome is still branding. How I work as a business model for the company is we have collaborative teams. So everyone are pro lenses across the world. So I only have an admin and an accountant. And we work depending on the client's brief and what they need. We approach the right mix of people and we supply the services. Okay. That's some words from my client. You guys can go on the website and that's my photo and that's what we do. We create, we discover, we pioneer, we celebrate. La Dida. And we think outside the box. So today, I'm hoping to speak to you guys and let you start thinking outside the box for your brand or your businesses. Um, how many of you are running your own businesses? And everyone's got your own brand? Are your brand your own names? Okay. <laughs> so personal branding is another big thing now that's happening and big corporates are looking into that, wanting their CEOs to also do personal branding so that it rep represents... So I'm going to take you through how we apply the whole authenticity or, or branding um, framework to make sure that applies to understanding your values and how you apply that to translate it into branding, logo creation and naming. So again, it all starts with how many people does it take to make a difference and that's you and why you're running your businesses and your values and your whys, which is, yeah, it means now whether we apply it to the business or to ourselves, which is a conscious mindset, intentional, clear mission, vision, and values, action-oriented, and it's about people, um, your tribe, right? 
So first question before we kind of go into the whole creation of how do you make a brand is who are you, which you don't have to answer, but you should always ask yourselves, um, what do you do and why does that matter? Because that takes you back to your core root of values and purpose. Um, I guess you guys have seen this. There's lots of TED Talks about this, and it's always about finding your why, right? The how and the what is the easy thing, but the why is the one that takes you a long time, and once you understand that, that's when you're ready to roll. So um, values, passion, and purpose, you always have to ask yourself. This is just theory stuff before we go into the case studies. Uh, what do I stand for? What assets, skills, and talents do I possess, p p possess that supports my stance? And what do others perceive as my most valuable assets? And that's, ap that's applicable to also your business. What do you stand for for your business? What assets and skills and talents does it possess to support the stance? And what do others perceive as the most valuable assets? So value creation, applying it to your brand. You look into your core belief, the values of it. Um, when we go into the case studies, it's easier for you guys to relate what I'm talking about to the output of the work of clients. Um, the purpose or the reason for being and what are the commitments? Or why do they do it for? And what are the strategies for us to deliver the values and the purpose and the commitments? And this can be a one-man show business ran company or it can be a big conglomerate but the thinking and the framework applies. Yeah. So then we take that and we go to what I call branding one, two, three. Um, because it's as easy as once you know your values and your purpose and your reasons why, you can then create the name, the personality, and the design aesthetics, your design solutions. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, Ryan, you were saying my whole corporate profile and the look of that with the whole black sleek intentional living because I, I talk to a lot of male CEOs, um, they are my clients, is very different on how I would apply this talk, right? Like it's all kind of fun, everyone's chill and yeah so that's design aesthetics so one of the first cases i'll take you through is a nesta um, the one on the far left here is actually a client of mine in kuala lumpur they're a big um, property developer okay and they come they've got a wide range of properties from low-cost housing to um, apartments mid 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 value apartments to super luxury um high-end, above a million dollars kind of property development, right? So Anasta came about, it's quite close to my heart because it's my first big account when I launched the consulting company. Um, <coughs> this was in, this was about a year and a half ago, okay? So they've got the design, it's actually a, the brief from the client to me was, Anasta was their prototype name, the model of of the, the, the design that they had for, th for the uh, development. They kind of liked the name, but they didn't know why. So they were like, okay, go figure this out. This is the design of the property. Um, this is the current prototype or project name we've got. We kind of like it, but we don't know what it stands for. Um, and to them, the category of work they were offering was actually um, uh, social homes, like low cost housing. So that was the brief to me. Uh, so recreate the brand, reposition it, tell us our values and, you know, how do we launch it. Um, the, the apartments was going to be about ready for their first round sale, with, which is a tendering process in Malaysia. And you can, like, pick up your coupons and buy the apartments. Uh, they're about 90% sold now and it's going to be ready. And Asta is going to be ready in two years. So the case study here is when I took the brief, we looked into um, the offering. So that was the kind of logo that they had already there. It looked like that. The, 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 the client gave that to me and the name was Anasta. Um, we looked into the offering, the overall brand, the product and the service, um, the portfolio of businesses and what was their value proposition for us to recreate or we had the option to give them a new name or give them strategy of what is the current name and the identity tagline and also their brand guidelines. Okay, so that was the output of it. So when we looked into the category, they weren't really actually affordable affordable homes because they were above 500 
thousand ringgit, which is like five hundred thousand ringgit is like three hundred thousand USD. So they were they were quite pricey for affordable homes, right? So we we searched the the services they offered, and it was actually a category where we could provide new, which was more like solution homes, because they weren't fitted. Like the the product itself didn't have um equi uh, ready ready interior and everything but they had space planning so it was kind of already um half thought through so it was in the category of solution homes which then t brought us to the targets of um target audience that we were talking to we knew was starter starter homemakers um it was going to be built for rent and their solution homes so this is just as quickly identifying the category okay then we looked into competition and what everybody was offering, product segmentation, the target buyers. We knew they were mainly younger um, first family uh, and they were rental income owners or first time home buyers, like starter homes. Okay? So understanding the profile of the target audience and who was going to buy them before we created the branding and the identity. And who were really the generation, the target users? It was the generation rent, we call them. They were not going to buy it. Their parents were going to buy it for them. And they were just going to stay there. Or they were just first families going to rent out this property of Anasta. So we, had, we looked at insights, um, trends. And that's when we came up with the value proposition of solution homes, which were redefining home ownership and urban living because we understood the target a bit more. I'm like really fast forwarding the whole research um, section, right? And um, the tagline or the value there was your solution to living life in terms of the value creation of the brand, okay? Your solution to living life, buying to Anasta, your solution homes instead of affordable homes, okay? Everyone's with me as the train of thought now? Yeah. So then we applied it to what is essential living? What is solution homes, right? So it's necessary, it's important, it's about our product was going to be about integrity, it's going to be built for rent, it's of quality, and there was going to be a community of people living here because it was a block of like 200 apartments. Yeah. So it was symbolic. What was symbolic to that, to that group of people or to this group of owners, right? It was symbolic of home and family. And that's why that name, Anasta, ringed the bell to the clients. That's why they came up to me and said, hey, you know, th I, we kind of like this name, but we didn't know why. So it was actually Nest subconsciously. We were already aware that it had encompasses home and family and nesting, right? So when we identified that and we unearthed that, we were like, we're going to use this, you know, because... It's about nestling and nesting, and it's already there. So what we did was we, and this is how we work with creatives, we um, gave them references out of Pinterest. We showed them aesthetically what it was a, 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 a reference that we would like. Like we know the name now, Anesta had the word nest in it. We wanted to highlight nest, and we wanted to make it more natural and, uh, and human. So the reference here was to use handwriting, um, our, you know, the kind of that kind of what do you call it? What? Yeah, calligraphy. Yeah, and the association it was visually to a nest, right? So because it was going to be and when we execute, it was going to be warm and friendly, colorful, tactile, wholesome, natural, and made with love. Yeah. So this was actually the brief to the graphic designers. We gave a mood, very reflective to the product um, of the prototype of the model types of the apartments. Again, off Pinterest. And we gave them ideas how we could apply that into things that represented. So a Nesta, nesting, buy the home, get a gift. And it was like the nest and the egg, you know? And then in their gallery, the sales gallery, we actually had that same couch made. So people are sitting in the nest. And it's very W. If you go to the W Hotel in Seminia, there's a big couch as well with the eggs. So it's representing, again, the values or the intent they had. So they were going to go back to providing not low-cost housing, but solution homes. 
to target families that were first home starters. And so we understood the target and the audience of the buyers. There was something in the name of their product. They kind of knew it subconsciously, but they just couldn't translate that. So now we intentionally brought out the naming to the branding so that the product, when people buy, and just understood what it stood for. So that's, my, uh, that's our framework to branding with intent. So from that, it wasn't very far off. We, we took elements of it still, of the branch and the bits. And because they had it there, they just couldn't pinpoint, the clients couldn't pinpoint that it was the NAS, you know? So they had elements in the bits and the branches. Uh, we re-emphasized the typography uh, using Anasta to, to kind of enlarge it. And of course, as all brand guidelines do, we had elements to explain the color usage, um, the, the, the reason why we use it, and how it was going to be prolonged into all their collaterals. So that's one example. Any questions so far on how we thought this through? Um, which NAS, the, the typography? Oh, because it was, um, the, uh, it was too manic, it was too colorful, and it made it feel a bit cheap because it was of a certain price bracket. And that whole kind of, it was the in color, that whole kind of green, bluish, brownish, very subdued, and it had to be natural, more than loud and, you know. So you can see how then we translated that. See, we, uh, so this was all the identity templates. They even applied that to their PowerPoint presentation and stuff like that. And then we had guidelines to letterhead, how we applied that to their brochure style, um, banners, Advertising templates, hoarding design, billboards, PowerPoint, paperback. So these are all cute execution stuff, which are really easy to do once we know where we stand and where our um, strategy, communication ideation strategy comes. So the line there was, you know how it was actually um, living life? The value proposition was, what was it just now? Uh, the first few slides, your solution to living life when translated into an advertising tagline to kind of make people feel all uh, lovey-dovey and stuff. So it's where dreams come home. So that's the whole communication tagline, okay? So how we translate it into the website and even the reference to photography style. So it all applied and all had a guideline. So I guess with, with um, some takes out, takeouts in how we approach it is before when it came to branding and marketing it, it's very, you know, clients it's, I'm very fortunate to have CEOs that believe in long term value of branding because they know it's not necessarily, but the, but the good thing with the Nesta, I'm just quite lucky as well it's sold because the product was good and they knew what they were doing, you know, and they were a very well known reputable developer but um, in the past, I think everyone just wanted to market stuff because it was transaction-based. They wanted to see immediate sales. And I'm not saying I don't agree with that, but I think there's long-term value in building brands. So when they are transaction-based, it's always just about like a scream-out message. It's static. It's saying. Uh, there's some look and feel. It's usually quite complex. It's one way. And then before... Uh, when I was in AE 20 years ago, you know, we had this touch points where, okay, when you get here, you speak like this, you know, there's a flow of customer journey, so we call it touch points. And it's all about the audience, the target audience, and it's standardized. But I think moving forward as how we speak and how things are evolving, um, we look into branding with more feeling. We want to make sure we stand for the value or the intent that we have, and companies are starting to understand that because it's relationship-based. Um, it's a conversation, though you're selling, especially, I think especially when you're selling a product above 300,000 US, you know, it's always about a conversation and understanding and this is long term, it's your house, so it's dynamic, it's about doing, it's just not saying, it's the experience of it, so that's why the whole, like, it could be just an egg holder, but it's still a sweet experience for a homeowner to be, to kind of like, you know, the house is not ready, but they can visualize it, you know. So we play a lot with emotions. It's simple, it's a dialogue, it's an engagement. It's about building communities, as we know, and it's always authentic. Uh, they, 
yeah, once you kind of know what you are and what you offer based on your product and your values and you communicate that in a style you believe in, your competition doesn't, it's, it's not relevant. And if they copy you after that, you're still the first one to do it and then you go on to something else. And that's what I believe has worked for most of the brands I worked with. So the only thing you take with you when you're gone is what you leave behind. So it's about also always not just doing good, but being good. And we all believe in that in whatever we do. And I think it ties, that, ties back to that being good human beings. Yeah? Mm. Ta-da! And that's my page. So ideation and branding to me is in instinctive. The power of your brand lies in being present and authentic the brand of your business. And I was saying at the start, um, this year, I'm getting a lot of uh, queries about personal branding now even. And when they say personal branding is relating that brand back to you and your name. And it's, it's kind of in now with, with a lot of entrepreneurs and um, speakers and marketeers. Like I think Gary V is a big one. He's, all, he's got his media brand, his wine brand, but he's now big into his book and his personal brand. And I think it works. And this is where companies now also, or CEOs, want to leverage on that because they're all kind of young. The values of their business represent them. Like the Anasta CEO, um, so I took another project after that, was more on their corporate side. He's like 40, he's fit. So they wanted to do like a corporate uh, social responsibility for the country, like, you know, their CSR program. And he picked the platform that was what he believed in, which was fitness. So we, we created a whole wellness concept, Re still relating that to products. He had high-end luxury apartments that were in wellness concept that was a separate brand. But as a company, as a corporate company, he was also advocating for the country to start like living well. So that's kind of slash personal branding-ish. Cool? Yeah, so that's that's me, guys. That's what I've got to share. We've got lots of cases, but like you know, let's let's take it live to the floor, and let's see what we can do. Um, any questions about the thought process at all, or any help that I can provide? Shout out, especially for creatives. I think we I've worked with lots of creatives. Everyone like you know um, has a style has a has a uh, thing they're good at or has a preference or liking I think I'm just gonna change that slide and make it that yeah and um, I think Pinterest is really good for us entrepreneurs first business owners to use as references Pinterest boards um, especially when you talk to creatives because they see something visually that you have in mind because at, at the end, Design, creative, it's all very subjective. But if you stick to strategy, the subjectivity doesn't differ very much. Thank Go you. Go for it. Oh. Yeah. 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 All right. So um, I suppose that the presentation is Yeah, finished. I'll wrap up the and presentation unless you guys have any questions on yeah, the Yeah, so like maybe we are going to have like a 20-minute serve question and answer session. Yeah, so for everyone like who wants to ask questions, please do. And then, yes, please use the mic. So let's take mic the first check, question. One two, one two. <laughs> yeah. Is this working? Um, how do you deal with, um, or did you have the case where people, uh, companies, w would like to be purpose driven or would like to be full of values and very authentic, but they're actually full of shit? Excuse my French. How do you deal with that? When it becomes inauthentic, when it's more like, oh, this is a grace of like, oh, people want to see value. What could be our values that we sell? So they're kind of like trying to apply the new style of branding that you presented as a, as a smear on top of the old paradigm, so to say. That's like a very, yeah, that's, I can think of so many. <laughs> but to me, I think uh, how I deal with it personally is um, based on my sets of values since I started started work, uh, I don't think I don't think anyone's like really full of shit if you want to do something good, whatever you're selling, right? Unless you're a tobacco, and I personally don't support alcohol companies. So those that's my personal values and preference, right? Um, but even I had I had coal mining companies coming up to me saying we want to do something, and like if you talk shit, they do real <laughs> shit, right? 
But I think it, if it so you, you, you vary on how you want to balance that. So, okay, you do this. You got to do this. But what do you believe in? If they say, I still love orangutans and we still want to have a forest for them somewhere, but not where we cut them. How, you know, how, you know, so we work it out. So I think unless the product is really like fluff and you're conning someone, then yeah, we don't go there. But if if it's a not like I've got a, a another client back in Jakarta, they they sell chicken, um, fried chicken, you know, uh, chicken, right? But they made it into a thing where they they created um, the uh, what do you call it uh, mascot, like a cute doll. It's called so this brand is Chicken Roll, so she's rolled her own brand of franchising across Indonesia. And it's just fried chicken. And but they created a mascot called Kuka. And Kuka came like it's a little doll that they have school kids come to the chicken outlet, to the restaurant, and paint Kuka and people can buy that. So you can work into some values and purpose, though you're selling fried chicken. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank Next you. question. Yep. Thanks for that. That was useful. Uh, my biggest challenge is that I understand that it's all about personal branding now. Um, I have a cartoon alter ego that is a very important part of my business. And I guess my biggest challenge is how to integrate the two um, so that there is that personal touch people What's can the see business? me. Uh, it's a coaching business. Coaching? Yeah. Like personal development? Yeah, mind, mind shift coaching. Okay. So, but I use the cartoon character a lot. To represent the message or to represent yeah. you? Uh, okay. Uh, the cartoon is based on me. Okay. The character is is totally based on me, yeah. um, and she is used to get the message message oh. across. Yeah. But I'm very aware that the in thing of marketing at the moment is that personalization. So, yeah, it's about. Does the cartoon look like you? Uh, yeah. So that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> okay. I, and I think I think the, the way you've done that to have a a. Um, middle person mm -hmm. because it's sensitive to the nature of the business is cute but it's still representing you and it looks like you and you know it talks or the message yeah. so yeah w does it have an, what's the name of the cartoon character um, Elise which is the name of my business okay so it's representative of of the business I, I, I actually like I, I'm, g I'm going through the same process now like Niat is a philosophy a methodology I've created right but I, as I speak a lot of people want to also understand because I live in Bali, I can give, do my own thing, I'm single, there's women empowerment. So I'm slowly building that kind of brand for me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's okay, but you relate to, again, the values you have across both. You as a person and your business brand is still the same. Right? Okay. Unless you one day want to car park Elisi uh, yeah, yeah. and make it really you. Because you think it's strategic for you to be saying mm. the messages you are in your yeah. business, then... Okay. You gotta slowly um, move into that. Ev e e what's the word? Ev evolve. Yeah. E evolve, evolve into that. Evolved, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the business um, has evolved into coaching. It was originally a therapy business, okay. um, which I can't do while I'm here. So, but I know that there is, there will be in time, there will be an element of that. There's also going to be a cartoon character, which is why, at the moment, a cartoon movie, which is why at the moment, the the development of that brand is more important than the development of, of me. Yeah. But ul ultimately, the whole company is, you. is me. Yeah. And then this is one, albeit very big part of the company. Of the company. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, just getting that balance right. Yeah. So I don't get lost in it. Correct. But I don't, um, the, the branding, doesn't, the cartoon is yeah. allowed to, to come to the front. Yeah, it's, it's also really the roadmap or the planning of your business and the potential growth of your business mm -hmm. as you now already outline, right? Yeah. So if, if that cartoon and the cartoon movie is already taking certain stands and you're building you and you can segment yourself, mm -hmm. maybe when it comes to you, Lisa, it's a bit more private, it's a bit more high-end, it's a more senior, older market, whatever yeah. the strategy to that business segment is, then build that and yeah. people know that's for that. So those two don't really even talk in the same audience 
Yeah. When they're together. Uh, at the moment, but later on they won't. No, you're right. Ah, yeah. So, okay. And the clarity is important to you. If mm. you know where it's going and what it is, yep. then the people would get it. Yeah. And, and it's a process. Yeah. 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 Hello. Uh, thank Hi. you. Um, I, I really enjoyed the part where you said the uh, talking about branding as a long term competitive or not. You didn't say the word competitive advantage, but I'm curious. Uh, that's my question to you. Can you think of any brands where they've made that investment in their brand? And so they have this long term um, advantage as a result of that. And just kind of what brands ca like it's top like trees, studies. Apple, Starbucks, Richard Branson. Um, you know, those are brands that have long, l like, like B Starbucks value proposition to the brief, to the creative brief was the third place. So it was not a coffee joint. It was not a hangout joint. It was the third place because it's not the home or not the office. So it's where we go, right? Like, so, and that stood, stood through, right? Like Apple, um, the value of that is um, creativity, so it's of course it's the cute, coolest, most technology thing, whatever, whatever, product. But anybody who holds it feels suddenly you're this whole creative guru, and you can go make a film, right? Like yeah. So, so that's the value of. But when you talk, because I've actually um, looked into um, talking to uh, capital market people, where the businesses needs to go to IPO, and where is the equity of the brand, and how uh, it's a bit difficult in that value because it's not in the calculation, at least for Indonesia. So they don't take brand equity as something when we go list it, so this is what you've got to invest in. But they know you need to do it. That's why CEOs believe in it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. It, it does. I'm, I'm just try trying to wrap my head around it because I think in value, I think in value in, in terms of the product and what the actual, pro what problems the product can solve and, and giving competitive advantage Oh, that way. okay. So against any kind of competitors or, or copycats. So I'm, I'm still chewing and marinating on this concept that even if, some, like what you were saying, even if someone comes along with your same values and tries to do the same things you've done with your brand, you were there first. And I'm just trying, I'm trying to play that out in terms of how the branding investments can still, I'm thinking like in terms of even like Coca-Cola, you know, and their branding and what they've done. And would that still give them that competitive advantage even without, uh, you know, their, their formula being, you know, kind of the, the best, the best yeah. you know? Um, again, I think th there is another video. I think I've got a video that you guys can s watch later about how long term, like brands from the start and why they play a role because they've been in our lives as we grow. And that's just part of familiarity and stuff. And you're, it's just like how McDonald's anywhere in the world you go, you know, the food's not great, but because it's part of you, that feeling you feel safe, you just go eat a McDonald's if you're in Moscow. Because you feel that's what you know. So it's that, again, in intrinsic feeling yeah. that yeah. brands build. I think it's more in that value. If you're talking about product differentiator, yeah. spec to spec, it's very difficult. That I, uh, unless you're like a techie, rational person. Like I've got a very good friend. He just refused to buy, at least for me, when he goes travel, the original Apple iPhones, uh, earphones, because he feels... The Amazon ones, you can buy 10 and they all work the same, you know. But I don't feel that way. I think the original ones, you can hear, you can't hear the fake ones. You know, so it's just like it's something in your, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Does I, it make I sense? appreciate that's, yeah. that's starting to click for me. I'm, yeah. I'm starting to get that. So yeah. it's that kind of, I think what builds, and it depends on your your kind of type as well. Like, yeah. are you a, someone who would fall into some, I know some CEOs that just don't, or some people that just don't believe in uh, marketing or branding at all. Their product sells, but uh, you know, uh, how long, how far? Yeah. I don't. So they, they're not my. <laughs> they're not my. Yeah. Unless they want to do something different and they want to open up. But I never have the argument. Like if someone says, "Oh, I don't believe in logos and design," I'm like, "Okay, cool. See ya." <laughs> If you're working with a company, and then um, of course you're dealing with a group of people, right? I mean, maybe someone from marketing, someone from operations, someone from finance, and then you know maybe so the, the guy from the finance, oh, that's too much money waste, wasted on things that we don't know, you know. So uh, like, but you still have to work with them. So how do you like how do you bring them all on the same page? My current strategy is I work with the CEO. 
or the decision maker. It doesn't have to be the, you know, it could be you and your business, and I need to understand you and it translate you. So if there are founders or like a business where there's three of them, I see how that dynamics are. If there's just like all three on the same page, if, you know, if it's a battle, because you can't convert someone if they don't want to be converted. You know, uh, that's not my game. I'm just trying to strategize your in it. But um, big companies, especially when, and I think, I think that's why likes attract likes, right? If they, it, it's still very, like I'm struggling to scale now. Like, you know, I get big companies, but it's v what I offer is, is very niche. So like I'm coming to my third year and they are my repeat clients that are buying, in, that getting into other projects. And I, but if I um, go out there and say, okay, everybody, I'm going to get that. Some people, you know, but yeah, I believe in it. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the value I, okay, yeah. And to me, it doesn't really have to also just be your design. I think it's the clarity even of your business and the purpose of you doing it. I think a lot of, uh, we spoke about this, right? Like how big conglomerates, because they just want to expand, they don't really know why they're doing or getting into that business until it's done. And then we had to go work backwards. And that's worse because we waste more money. Yeah. So it's just one thing to like get it right somewhat at the start. And it's still something we evolve. Like even my own business, I'm, I'm evolving, right? Like I don't know where it's really going, but it's going. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Go Any more it. questions? We have some time, yeah? Because my yes. share, yeah. I've got, yeah. Anyone? How are Don't you guys doing branding and stuff now? Like, you know, anyone needs clarity on their proposition? Or yeah. Actually, I have questions. Yeah, go for <laughs> it. So, um, so this branding, um, as I understood, is like focus more on corporate and sometimes like we can use it for personal development. But can we use the same strategy, like in your opinion, to, uh, to brand like a non-profit organization or an org organization based on like good cause? Definitely. This is more so. Yeah. They need, yeah, they, they need to. It, again, my, my values, I don't believe in non-profit, I think you've got to have a business that makes money, right? Because that's why you're in the business. But because you're doing something good and sustainable and you want to do good, everybody should do that. And that's where the branding or the clarity of what you offer needs to be out there. And you just got to decide, like, what is that cost? It's, you know, I, I know you guys, I've been to a lot of talks in my last three years getting on my own, talking about purpose and passion and values. I know it's frustrating because it's not an easy answer. I, I, I struggle a long time to answer what I'm really, really good at or what I'm really, really passionate at. Unless you're like Beyonce and you can sing or you can play, you know, it's, it's really something, you know, and it comes back to, I guess, with me, I comfort myself to decide it's consulting because I want to help people. I want to help people be mindful, but I couldn't make enough money out of it. So I know how to get businesses on board faster because I've done that the longer time, you know. So I hope somehow it will just impact everything. So it's like at the end it's about care and help. So but you know, so that's the value. But back to your question with non profit, they should just be very clear why they're doing it and how and then brand that. So people can come and support. Cool. Cool. Any more? You want any any briefs to crack? Yeah. Let's do this. Um, I founded a co-working space in the Netherlands and nice. Uh, yeah, and that goes well. Everything goes well. We also had help from others to help us with our branding. And now I'm here in Bali to plan uh, weddings because that's my dream since I'm 12. Um, you doing your your like event organizing for weddings or your own yes. wedding? Okay. Uh, even yeah. Okay. Also. Oh, <laughs> nice. For now, first the organizing part. Okay. Um, in the meantime, to uh, make a living, I'm doing online marketing for the businesses I met working in the Netherlands. Right. Um, but I also want to gain real experience in wedding planning because right. I feel it's essential. And when I go talk to wedding planning companies or show them my CV, um, I have the impression that they get a bit confused because I don't have a background in weddings right. 
or in hospitality, but I have a lot of experience in organizing events. Right. Um, so how can I, yeah, o almost uh, brand myself yeah. in a way that they think, ah, her experience is also suitable for the weddings because there I think that they are very traditional minded and they only think, okay, about the study background, yeah. maybe which I don't have in that field, but I know I can do it and how yeah. do I convince them? Were you going to do your own wedding as well here? No. Uh, no, 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 okay. no, yeah, maybe later, later but, but <laughs> not, not as a, no, because you could use that as your portfolio. Yeah, but to yeah, go around, I will have to if convince you're not going to do that, then, uh, uh, like, definitely you have the operational skills, right? Yes. So that's what you got to go up and say, I do events and this is why, and why your operational skills have been successful. I guess they're confused because they don't know why you want to do weddings, right? Like yes, because, yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. So your question is, how do we promote you? Uh, yes, <laughs> and then in the wedding field, because now also uh, when I talk to people, yeah. I tell them that I'm here doing online marketing because I think otherwise I have a gap in my uh, CV, in my working experience. Um, and then also people ask me, so what is your end game if you're going to do this sort of internship in my company? Are you going to continue with your own company? Um, and that's my plan. I want to continue continue with my own company, yeah. but it's not really safe to say if I um, want to gain experience here in, yeah. in another company. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if I were to approach you like a brief, like a client's brief, I think that's when we go, okay, what's your objectives? Mm -hmm. First, more, the first is like you're getting clarity about you and I think you need some coaching on what you want to do and your life plans and stuff, but that's personal, right? But on the business, if you really say, I want to get into wedding planning event organization it's like okay who have you approached which type of companies how much success rate or like how many is that that pipeline that leads you have like when i first for example I, and i always reflect it back to how I, I i went through with mine right when i first got my first client it was actually off a friend because it was a network off facebook but i had to send like 500 emails just saying i'm doing this guys and you know, I'm, I'm taking pictures. It's easier for me because I've got the background. But I guess for you, you got to somehow um, put the aesthetic of maybe in your social media profile, have wedding stuff going on, mm -hmm. talk about, you know, so people understand that's what you're directing to. Get into communities, if not the actual companies, communities that are, you know, help a friend with a wedding or mm -hmm. something. So it shows that you're actually doing operations you can do, but you're actually doing what you're passionate about. Like, uh, yeah. And how do you feel about, because many people tell me um, it's okay to leave some things out of an interview, but I sometimes people tell me that I'm too honest. So also in the interviews, I would like to tell them, well, it's my goal to also grow and also do weddings in Italy and in Greece. But I want to get this real experience here now with your company, but in two years, I probably will be gone. Um, but Is you should be used to that because it's Bali. No okay. one stays here forever. Okay. I think it's good for you to be honest to a certain extent if they don't, you know, like, wh wh what are you con where does your conscience sit, right? Like, if you feel you want to, but are you interning or you want to pay? Like, if you're interning, they shouldn't be worried. Like, if you're going to get experience, right? Yeah, just to get my uh, living cost covered. Yeah, yeah. Just keep going. That's okay. my advice. Like, you will meet the right one that would appreciate it. You know, like if you anyone has any other yeah input. Oh, my my question to that would be, what have you got to offer them? Uh, technical. What's your selling well. point? So you you look at what you've yeah. got, the skills that you've got, and how that will benefit them, regardless of whether it's related to weddings or not. But how it will benefit them, and as soon as they can see the benefit, then you've you've yeah. got your foot in the door. Yeah. yeah. But make sure you focus on how they are going to benefit from you, what you have to offer. Yeah. I will always take on anyone that has value to give, yeah? Mm. Cool. Right. Hi. Anyone interested to ask some questions? Any other parts you need me to cover in terms of a framework or anything you guys are going through that you feel? Creative people, the, gra the, the designers, 
are you guys struggling with anything with real life clients here now? Cool. Yes, go for it. Are you are you creative, Faith? Uh, I'm trying to stay active. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> because I you got that <laughs> creative thinking <laughs> look going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, could you speak maybe a little bit to you know for like startup companies? Uh, how closely and maybe you already covered this. My apologies if I missed this in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. How closely would this intentional uh, marketing run to, for example, uh, product formulation? Like, if you don't even have a product yet, you're just like starting a brand new company. Is that, do you see that going kind of like in hand tandem? Hand in hand, yeah. Ta okay. Totally. And, and why? Why? Yeah. Because I think that would really answer the real reason why you're doing what you're doing. You know, like, I so you're saying you've decided you've not even decided on the nature of business it's or almost like it's almost like you know like oh an idea what if there was this product you know what i mean like w like when the idea just strikes you for yeah uh, but again but why 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 that idea why that product for you and what value or how different or where does it sit in your value set for you for that because i think with create yeah. i think with creatives and, and uh, non-creatives even, when you want to start a business, of course, all sorts of ideas come through, right? And this is a balance of making ideas or making a business based on values or making a business based on getting money. I know people that invest in businesses because it's just making money. They don't have any connection or relations to it at all, right? But that it's still a conscious value set that they got into. Okay, that rings some. So it's it's because I think of it as oh, idea to solve problem X, but there's in the you know multitude of problems that could be solved with invention X Y Z. Really, it's like choose which ones you want to solve because you have inside of you, and that's you. That's yeah. that's the, I like that. Yeah. yeah, I dig that. Cool. Thanks. Because because uh, it's what you've got to offer at the end, and when when like shit hit the fans, you're the one that sits with it, right? And right why on, you right do on. it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. And you don't really know, but you just go with it. Like, you don't really know. It's not something like you have the answer straight away as well. But you just know and it feels kind of right or wrong. Yeah. Cool. It's a bit opera sometimes. Yeah, I sit here and <laughs> But it's true, right? Like, you... Yeah. But it is important at that stage mm. for product mm. development, formulation, business creation. Yeah, it's it's almost like uh, wrapping my head around it. It's like it's almost like it's um, think of it as an aspect of the problem that you're solving. Yeah, problem. I think th th I was I was in a I was in a startup weekend last year or two years ago. Someone said like, if you've got kids, ask your kid what what is not what they want to be, but what problems they're going to solve. You know, because we grew up. I grew up saying, okay, what do you want to be? I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a prime minister, or whatever, right? But it's like, okay, what problems are you going to solve? Why do you want to solve that problem? And I think that was like really wow, like you know, same for us business people trying to make a living. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Are you guys off? Okay. See you around. Thanks for coming. Bye. Um, you said that you were working on your own personal branding. Yeah. How is it going? Um. So it's weird because uh, there's two parts. It's going well. I'm still, I've still not kind of cracked it because I see a lot. Like it's, it's in my nature to figure out and then go into competition, right? See what's out there and stuff. And that's not much done in Asia. It's a, it's big in America with personal branding and them. But again, it's already a template where it's of that person being shot really nicely and they look really presentable and it's all colorful and it's across with lifestyle and stuff so i'm still trying to digest the execution because i don't know what is the final strategy i'm trying to imply but i am also doing it mainly um whether it's because i want to get more business or is it because i want to advocate something i believe in i'm still answering all that then i will come out and yeah. are you doing that on your own or are you also um, talking to mentors or other people in the business for that you uh, usually you help others with their branding. Do you have others to help you with your own branding? Um, I actually, not not the clients, but I ask my good friends. 
Because there are things like, you know, things you want to do, you know, things you ask friends. Like, what, what do you, sometimes you just need clarity, right? What do you really think I'm passionate about? You've known me this long. You know, what do you, what do you hear me saying or talking about most, you know? So just to kind of get someone to tell it back to you. Yeah, that's as much as help. But strategically and design and stuff, I'm still directing it with my team. Yeah. But I think the best people you get answers from are the people that would tell you the truth and they know you well. Right, um, and it's not usually your working people. <laughs> it's usually friends, maybe not your family as well. <laughs> so, yeah, you know who you trust, lah, and you ask them. Last one. All right, I suppose uh, if um, we're going to take another um, like last question for the session, or otherwise maybe. I'm right, yeah, I can speak to you guys one on one. Mm -hmm. Find out what. Yeah, I've well. got until. Well, like 15 yeah, minutes, 15 yeah. Minutes. So, um, I hope that was fruitful. Um, I hope it at least got you guys thinking outside the box because that's at the end what you want to be doing. And you will have all these questions, and it will not be very, you know, straightforward. But like, trust the process. And you're in Bali, how wrong can it be? Yeah, right. Cool, guys. Thank you for your okay, time. Okay, thank you, um, everyone. And please give a big applause for our no guest speaker, for our Ayla. Uh, yeah. And um, I've yeah, got some speakers. Some so this is a speech. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually, yeah. it was for a paper bag, a goodie bag I did in Jakarta. They're not, they're just stickers. Put them on your travel bags, the cool yes. ones. So yeah. yeah, they're not name cards. Right. Have them, yeah. So it's right. Niat. Okay. Um, add me on your Facebook. At Niat, I mean, the <laughs> company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, follow them. Instagram. Yeah. Cool. So, okay, once again, thank you for Ayla Noradin and thank you for everyone who have come here. And please enjoy your time. And next week, we're going to have another genius talk. Um, Murray Edward is going to speak about how to improve your life with public speaking. So if you are someone shy who's like to speak in public like me so please spend your time to come here and then um, be connected when uh, with the speakers and then yeah uh, after this if you still want to have some, ask some questions if you're shy like to ask it like in front of the public you can um, connect directly with Ayla and then she's gonna be here until the next 15 minutes and in the meantime um, you can enjoy our food and we have like coupons that you can use for um, for the payment. Okay, so once again, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, and then, um, yeah, have, see you next time. <laughs>